Good morning, my name is Mary Copeland and welcome to the monthly Compass Points presented by Compass and Clock. We offer these the third Thursday of each month from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. We call them Lunch and Learns. Today, our presentation is going to be the joys and benefits of gardening. We have two presenters. Laurel Moulton is with the Washington Masters Gardeners Program, and Christine Grant is with Martha and Mary. We are going to kick off today's presentation with Laurel. So Laurel, the floor is yours. I always forget to unmute myself. Um, thank you so much, Mary, for inviting me to join you today. Um, I wanted to use my, my time to give you the best bang for your buck um, to find gardening information. So what I'm gonna do is I'd like to introduce to you what the Master Gardener program is and how to, to find out how to get um, resources from the program. Our mission, um, is a little bit uh, complicated, or not complicated, <laughs> wordy I'll say, engaging university trained volunteers to empower and sustain diverse communities with relevant, unbiased, research-based horticulture and environmental stewardship education. Um, but in order to kind of um, uh, let you know why, where university education comes in and why we exist, I want to start with a history of the WSU Extension Program um, and also the Master Gardeners, just briefly. So uh, the Master Gardener Program is, is a program of WSU Extension. Um, in 1862, land-grant universities were created by the Morrill Act, um, and so there should be a land-grant university that's publicly funded in every, um, in every state. And those universities were, were given land to do agricultural research. Um, in 1887, the Hatch Act um, created agricultural experiment um, stations in all states. And so those are all also related to the land grant universities. And in 1914, um, Extension was created as a partnership between the USDA, county government, and land grant universities. And that is the part that, that um, basically what they wanted to do is take the, the research that was going on at these land grant universities and at these um, experimental research stations and bring it out to the farmers. Um, and so there is an Extension office in every county in the state, and there should be an Extension office in every county in the U.S. Um, so where do Master Gardeners fit in? Well, originally the extension program was created for farmers. Um, and as the state became more populated, um, there's more urban areas. And suddenly um, you have all these folks living in cities calling up the extension office with questions about their apple trees and their blueberry bushes and growing vegetables. Um, and with one or two extension agents whose job it was to conduct research and provide help directly to farmers and nurseries and, and other larger entities that got unwieldy pretty quickly. So, um, so what WSU decided to do was to have um, uh, WSU faculty train volunteers who would then go out into the community and interact with home gardeners. Um, so the, the, the WSU Extension Program started in 1973. Um, I'm in Clallam County and ours started in 1978. But the cool thing is, is the whole Master Gardener Program started in Washington State in King and Pierce counties, um, because those are the most populated counties in Washington. Um, they tried a couple different things before starting the Master Gardener Program. They thought, well, if we go on the radio and go on TV and and talk to homeowners and give them gardening information, they'll stop calling us. But instead, when they did these radio and TV programs, it just generated more calls to their office. So that's when they decided to, to train volunteers. So we were the first program um, in Pearson and King counties in all of the United States to start the Master Gardener program. We snatched the title from, um, from a term that's used in Germany, the Gartenmeisters. Um, and so far, the Master Gardener program has been adopted in every state in the, in the United States. 
um, in Canada and, uh, and across the world. In 2014, I, I had the privilege to go visit South Korea where they had just started a master gardener program there. So today, um, today master gardeners and our extension offices are the front door to the university. We provide lifelong learning and science-based educations Educate, educational programs to the public in each of our counties. Um, we've grown from just doing plant answer clinics um, and some lectures to cover all these different program areas. We don't just talk about, you know, making, growing a greener lawn or dealing with aphids. We also do education on wildfire preparedness, water conservation. So if you're in an area where rain gardens are a thing, we do that type of education. Um, nearby nature, um, increasing access to natural areas, uh, um, protecting pollinators, working with clean water, local food, and local food is kind of the big one right now. Um, we teach horticultural skills, soil health, um, plant uh, biodiversity, and we also help with um, gardening in, the, in a time of climate change. So we cover all sorts of different garden-related topics. Our master gardener volunteers provide research-based education in, in gardening and environmental stewardship. And um, in various, various formats, we do, um, we answer questions and go out into the community. So I'll talk about a few of those. Um, one of the, the primary things that master gardeners started to do in the beginning were what we called plant answer clinics. And if you uh, remember back to the slide where I was talking about the history of the program, they started these plant answer clinics going to malls like the Northgate Mall um, to do these. Um, here in Clallam County, we have a plant clinic in Port Angeles at the courthouse. Um, and we also have a plant clinic at our demonstration garden in Squim. Um, currently, of course, we're doing this all online. So if you're in Clallam County and you have any type of plant question, you can contact us by email. Um, and we kind of have a, a Zoom uh, plant clinic discussion group. We also do lectures and workshops and garden demonstrations. So these pictures are, these ones are actually both at our, our Woodcock demonstration garden. Um, on the left, Audrine is talking about tomato trellis trellises and cloches. And on the right, that's Keith and uh, Jim and Al working in the compost demonstration area. Um, so our demonstration gardens, um, those two pictures on the last slide, those were at our Woodcock demonstration garden, which is located in Squim. That garden is actually owned by our Master Gardener Foundation, and we use it exclusively for, for garden demonstrations, and it's just a nice place to go take a walk to. Um, so on the right, that's just an aerial view of the garden. We have um, vegetable demonstrations. We have um, it's wheelchair accessible. This is an older picture, but the um, the pathway, the U-shaped pathway that goes around the garden here, is actually packed gravel that that has that's okay for wheelchairs. Um, we have demonstrations for pollinators. We have a demonstration orchard, which is this is this was taken in the winter, so back here you can't really see the orchard, but we've got the orchard and mason bees. Um, uh, native plants, the color garden, shade garden, all sorts of things. And we also hold, hold workshops here. Um, the one on the left is the Fifth Street Community Garden, which is actually a community run garden. And our Master Gardener program just has some demonstration plots. So we, we hold monthly walks there throughout the growing season to just talk about what you should be planting, what pests and disease you might encounter, and sustain, sustainable ways to manage those. This is, um, so if you're wanting to learn about any garden topic, we cover most of them, um, if not every year. Um, you know, these are ongoing, we have different topics every year. So, um, so the Fifth Street Community Garden, um, as COVID-19 loosens up a little bit, <laughs> we'll, we'll be holding in-person walks again. We also do in-person walks at the Woodcock Demonstration Garden. Um, we write for the Swim Gazette. We sometimes do special sections in the Peninsula Daily News, and then we have shows on KSQM and KONP. This is um, this year's 
event schedule for lectures and workshops. Um, so you can see we, we've already covered firewise gardening. Um, we talk about propagation, um, common sense guide to fungicide use, um, all sorts of, of um, presentations having to do with vegetable gardening um, and ornamentals. Um, somebody earlier mentioned they were interested in, in exercises that might help them. Um, so we also do classes and uh, we have a, a speaker coming up doing body saving advice from a physical therapist um, for gardeners. Um, and I'll be doing some classes and in identifying um, insects in their juvenile and egg forms. So we cover all sorts of things. We also partner with um, Seroptimus International for their garden show. Um, and then these Digging Deeper webinars, these are usually our, our hands-on workshops. So um, we did blueberry pruning. Um, we have a, a presentation called, an interactive presentation called Newcomers to the Olympic Peninsula because so many people um, retire out here and need to learn about the, gr the growing conditions um, and many other topics. We also do, in addition to our programming, um, like workshops and lectures for adults, we also work with kids. So our two major programs right now, which are both kind of on hold due to COVID-19, but we hope to start them up again, are um, we have a garden at the local Boys and Girls Club um, where we, they have a garden club. So um, they grow vegetables for the kids there and they eat them at the Boys and Girls Club and take some home. Um, and then we also have volunteers that visit every classroom in the whole um, entire county and teach, um, teach an hour long gardening class. Uh, we have a, a scarlet runner bean puppet and, and we do seed viewers and uh, we do all sorts of fun stuff with the kids. We also um, partner with 4-H, um, the WSU Extension 4-H group to have a, a, a garden club as well. So I just wanted to, now that I've given you an idea of what the Master Gardener program is, I, I'm Right now I'm talking mostly about Clallam County, but I realize some of you guys are in other counties, so I'll talk about how to find resources for other counties. Um, if you're in Clallam County, or right now our extension website is not, not the best in the world, but you can find Master Gardeners in, in, the, um, in the menu here, and we have all sorts of topics here. Um, we have our event calendar. Um, if you're interested in becoming a Master Gardener volunteer, you'll find information there as well. Um, and then we have information about um, everything else that we do. Um, so I'm just going to go to, this is the resources page, uh, WSU gardening res uh, Garden Resources. So here we have cal garden calendars that are made specifically for the North Olympic Peninsula. Um, they would work well in other areas in western washington too but they were just created here um, and you'll find links to other um, other local resources on this page as well um, so in the local articles and archived presentations um, because we're doing everything online right now it's a good opportunity to record them and so most of the presentations um, well since june unfortunately zoom started deleting the recordings um, sooner than than they originally said, so I lost some. But but all of our presentations that we did, did last year and the ones that we're continuing to do this year, most of them are recorded here on our website. So um, drip irrigation. Um, we we like to do education about um, smart use of fertilizers, all sorts of things. So so those are ways to to access these resources. Um, most of our work is funded by our Master Gardener Foundations or associations. We have, um, we have the Clallam County Master Gardener Foundation here, um, and they do fundraising like plant sales. We have a plant sale in May. Um, this year is going to be pre-order, but, but since COVID-19 restrictions seem to be loosening up a little bit, there might be a little bit of in-person shopping going on. Um, we, we host a garden tour every year. That's been on hold as well, unfortunately, but we alternate between Port Angeles and, and SQUIM for those tours. Um, so in uh, 2022, we anticipate having um, the furthest west garden tour we've ever held, and we have some great gardens that are located on the Strait of Juan de Fuca. So look for that in 2022. 
Um, we also use, I, or I use our foundation for, um, as advisors to our program as well. So, um, and also here in Clallam County, we have a unique situation where um, back in the 80s, there was a piece of land that was donated um, to our Master Gardener Foundation for a demonstration garden. So we actually own that demonstration garden. Um, so if you're not in Clallam County, I'll just draw your attention to the state Master Gardener website. Um, you can go to mastergardener.wsu.edu. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't put the main homepage up here. But if you're looking for the for you, if you're looking for the program in, in your state, you can go to um, in the menu the county master gardener programs and click on any county and, it, and you'll come up with the website for your master gardener program in your county. Um, on this website, um, let's see what my time is here. Um, if you're interested, I can bring up the statewide master gardener um, website, but this is. Um, that was kind of an introduce, introduction to the Master Gardener program and some of the resources we provide. Um, and I'm happy to bring up the statewide website to show you some additional resources that will help you no matter what style of gardening you're doing. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Why don't you, why don't you take it off the um, screen share for the question session so you can okay. see people? There you go. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, actually, I have two. If um, if there if I miss a workshop, are they recorded? Yes, absolutely. Um, currently, since we're doing them all by Zoom, I try to record them. Occasionally, we'll have technical difficulties, but yes, they're all posted on on that Clallam County Master Gardener website that I showed you. Oh, that's great. Another yeah. question. My last question is, um, I'm in need of some mason bees because I got some last year and I only got six pods this mm -hmm. year for this year and I'm not sure if they're going to be good and it's the first time I've ever done this. Um, do you have a contact where I could get some mason bees? Um, yes, for mason bees, that's another thing we, we typically do is we do sell mason bee cocoons. This year, we, we had a, a very short supply, so uh, I'm, I haven't gotten word whether we're going to have any of those for sale. But if you want to purchase them, if you're in Clallam County, oftentimes Sunny Farms has them. And there's also another supplier that's, um, I think, over near Skagit that's called Crown Bees, which, uh, you know, um, has a great, I was going to say a great product, but that's weird saying that about bees. <laughs> They're a good supplier. Yeah. Yeah. Crown B and Skagit. Okay. Right. And I'll, if you, um, I guess you could send me a note through the chat box and I can put you on our list and contact you if we end up having extra cocoons. Um, I was told that we'd know by the end of the month. Okay. And I just wanted to make a comment. Um, your presentation was absolutely excellent. And I was able to take, take pictures and screenshots. Um, and I appreciate the hard work that you do. Thank you. Oh, thanks. The floor is open for more questions. Al, Lynn, Kaz, you have any? Christine? Oh, I, don't, I have a comment and a question. One, I had no idea that Master Gardeners had so many different um, facets of, of areas of interest. And um, so that was really interesting. I, I learned quite a bit. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, my question is also about bees, and um, mm -hmm. I'm no bee expert, but I know that for the past few years, they've been saying that the honeybees are, they're diminishing. Are we gaining any ground by saving the honeybees? Hmm, that's, a, that, that's a complicated question. Um, honey, honeybees have, have been in decline for, for many reasons. Um, the one that's in the news a lot is the neonicotinoid pesticides that are the there's a uh, systemic pesticide that are often used in nursery plants, but that is not the whole story. And um, the, there's other things like varroa mites and viruses that are going around, and also just the commercial beekeeping enterprises um, moving those colonies around so much and feeding them sugar. Um, some things, you know, with their diet also affects their, you know, how long they live and how healthy they are. So 
So honeybees, I think, are still are still in decline, but we're also um, encouraging folks to do things you can to conserve native bees like bumblebees and uh, ground nesting bees and solitary bees. Um, mason bees are a good example. <laughs> um, because those those are our native pollinators. Um, the honeybees are not native to the United States, although they're excellent pollinators. We can also make a huge difference by by conserving the native ones. Yeah. I have a question, Laurel, and it's okay. about potted plants. So my husband is the green thumb in our family, and he has quite a few jade plants and um when it's not winter he keeps them outside and then we bring them in the house and he's been out of town for a couple of months and so i have um kept them going but they feel all the dirt for all the plants in the house feels so dry and it seems to me like the soil is unhealthy like so is this something where um indoor plants should be repotted each year with fresh soil that's a good question. Um, they don't necessarily have to be repotted every year. I would encourage repotting um, as the plant outgrows their pots. Um, with with house plants, um, surprisingly, the the biggest killer of house plants is not neglect. It's actually overwatering. So if you put your plants in a pot that's too large, it's much easier to overwater them. So unless you're seeing a problem with the plant itself. Um, and jade plants are very hardy, <laughs> at least when it comes to surviving inside. Um, outside in the summer is great, but they cannot tolerate frost. Um, but yeah, it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, do much with the soil as long as you're not having trouble. You can, you can repot them every couple of years, um, but don't put them in a, a pot that's any larger than about an inch, maximum two inch larger than what they're in right now. With, with each transplanting, I should say. Thank you, that's a great tip. Yeah. Anybody else have questions for Laurel? Yes, I do. This is Cass. I have received um, a couple of invitation to Zoom meeting with uh, Master Garneras, and each one said uh, there is a charge of $5 to Master Gardener member and $15 to general public. Mm -hmm. Those um, Zoom meeting that you posted the same charge apply? Uh, no, that's actually a great question. The Master Gardener programs, although we all have throughout the state, although we all kind of do the same thing, um, we all have different means of fundraising. Um, so the workshops and the lectures that we do in Clallam County are all free. Um, uh, in the future, we may start charging a nominal fee for the workshops, but right now they're all free. There's no, there's no fee and the recordings are publicly available as well. Um, so it, it just depends which county you're in as to when they charge for that. And sometimes it's the Master Gardener Foundations that are doing speaker series with invited um, guests that require an honorarium and, and so they, they'll charge for that as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and if you, I, there's a couple more minutes um, till noon. It, may I take a couple minutes, Mary? Yes, you may. Okay. I just wanted to share my screen again and just show you some more resources because that's uh, our thing is, oh, okay, let's see here. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, this is the state master gardener website um, you can see our program priorities here as well um, and you can find this interesting this gardening in washington state website and this um, actually has links to all sorts of um, wsu extension publications and i should say that when we say are we offer research-based education this is what i'm talking about is we try to um, only offer um, sustainable gardening advice that's based in research. Um, so you can be sure that anything we share is something that, that should work based on research. So if you go to this website, um, you'll, you'll, you'll find all these different topics in, um, in the menu here. Um, so you can find publications on pest management, on organic gardening. These are all things that WSU um, has published. 
Um, I will just move this out of the way here. Um, WSU also has um, a publication. We call it the, the WSU Extension Publication Store. They do charge for some things, but most of them are free for download. So if you just put a, a topic in here, um, you'll, you'll find, um, unfortunately, Extension works with gardeners and still with farmers. So on this website, um, the, the one I showed you before, that one is just for home gardeners. This one you'll run into information that's made for farmers as well, so you have to wade through it a little bit. Um, since we're in Western Washington, we can also use publications that come out of Oregon State University. And in some cases, they have um, better topical publications than WSU does. So if you're looking for information on growing blueberries or, or kiwis in your home garden, for example, they have the, the Pacific North, Northwest small fruit expert there. So this um, Oregon State University extension catalog is where you would go for, for small fruit stuff. So um, that's all. I just wanted to give you as much, uh, as many resources as I could in the short time. So I hope that covered it. That was wonderful. And we did record this, or we are still recording at the moment. So um, all that information, you can go back and access. It will be on the Compass and Clock website by the end of today. Um, okay. Otherwise, first thing tomorrow morning. And if you still have questions for Laurel, feel free to write them in the chat bar to her, or you can email me afterwards and I will um, share that with Laurel. Our next presenter is Christine Grant. And for those of you that are familiar with Martha and Mary in Pillsbo, Christine Grant is their marketing director there. And she's extremely involved in all facets of the programs that they have. And they have an amazing gardening program and I thought it would be great to introduce her so you have another um, perspective on gardening as it pertains to um, taking place in senior housing communities. So Christine, the floor is yours. And if you'd like to share the screen, it's available for you to do so. Thank you, Mary. And um, thank you for, for having Martha and Mary um, as part of this. So I am not a master gardener by any means. <laughs> um, but I've learned a lot about the history of our horticulture program at Martha and Mary, which is pretty fun. So um, I'll share my screen with you right now. Um, there you go. Can you see my screen? Yes, and if you wanted to do what we did yesterday from slideshow, you then click the one yeah. on the left that said from beginning. So yeah, it, that's what I'm doing. More. There you go. Okay. Okay, so a little bit about Martha and Mary. Um, it, I don't know if you're all familiar with us, but um, we provide senior, um, senior living, independent living, assisted living, memory care, um, hospice care. Uh, we provide child care services, and, um, and we've been around for 130 years. So this year we celebrate our 130th anniversary. So um, we're pretty, pretty proud of that. Um, so in my history here, I've been here a little over two years and um, did some research about our horticulture. And as far back as I could find, um, our horticulture program um, and our health services building, which is where I am now and which I'll speak to you mostly about today, um, it started in 1998, and it essentially uh, started with a, a, a simple cart with a light bulb over it, basically. And um, there was an interest in gardening, and so they started with some small plants, and um, the residents here in our building did, and um, started with some, some uh, propagating more and more plants just from those cuttings. In which case they they had a whole slew of plants that filled this cart very quickly and they decided they should start selling them. So, um, so they started with a plant sale and decided that there was so much interest in that that the funds that they were raising from these plant sales that they should start working towards something bigger and better than a, than a cart, <laughs> a cart with a light bulb. So um, the, the, the idea of having a greenhouse on our campus um, became very important to people. And um, through a lot of love, a lot of clipping, planting, and so forth, and a lot of plant sales, um, and I'm sure there was a fundraiser or two involved with that, um, they were able to, to go ahead and 
and uh, build a greenhouse. And I think I, um, oh, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. Um, so with the greenhouse, they also ended up buying some planter boxes. You can see that on the screen there, that there's these planter boxes here. Um, today we have 21 senior friendly planter boxes that are all managed by people here, or our residents here, which has been really fun for a lot of people because um, they're wheelchair accessible, they're the, the right height for that for everybody. And, um, and people have really taken a lot of pride in, in what they're growing. Um, we have one gentleman here who has been working on some artichokes for six years. And um, I don't know much about artichokes, but I know that, um, that his artichokes this year are pretty significant in size. And we're really excited to see um, where, what's gonna happen with those. So um, he ate some last year and they were good and um, he's looking forward to this year. So it's kind of exciting. It's fun to see what they're what they're growing and um, what they're nurturing out there in our gardens and and we're blessed to be surrounded by the beauty of of, of their work so it's kind of fun um, right here on our veranda there's these hanging baskets um, our residents plant those as well and so um, when you drive by our building on front street here in Paulsbo, you can see these beautiful hanging baskets that were all started here so um, that's really fun and they take a lot of pride in and that's my basket that's the one i put together so um onto our greenhouse that's our greenhouse it's pretty big um and it's it's amazing and um outside here on the ground there were some tiles that they they used for part of the fundraising for um for that greenhouse and the residents go out there um all all year up until late fall and um and they go out there and they they use that space uh, our activity staff will assist people who need um a, a assistance with with that um mobility if they need to get out there and many people go out there independently so here's the inside and these were just taken two days ago so um so that's what's in our greenhouse right now so we've got all these beautiful hanging baskets that are getting ready for the veranda um we've got all sorts of um, bigger plants that they take cuts from and, and starts. And you can see we have some jade plants in there. It's a nice big space. Um, during COVID, we certainly have to limit how many people go in there. And, um, and that's fine, but, but we're using that space. You can tell it's um, well used because there's lots of green all around. Here's some more pictures. Here's our, our spider plant starts. And um, we have a bunch of aloe plants down here. And these are all, they're getting ready to sell these. So they'll have another plant sale here pretty soon. So um, COVID, COVID stopped our plant sales, but the plant sales that we have continue to support the need for dirt and seeds and that type of thing um, wherever we need to. So um, we've had a, plant, a few plant sales when I first started here. And then like last year, we, we weren't able to have those, those sales, but um, we're hoping to have some again in the, in the near future anyway. Moving on, um, from our plant sales, um, we, ha we also have people who, who can't go outside. And so um, we wanted to be able to support the people who couldn't go outside into the greenhouse and enjoy that, or those who, who necessarily couldn't get out to the veranda on their own, um, but still loved that joy of gardening. So we partnered with um, Elder Grow, and Elder Grow is an organization that, um, it builds these carts through the support of, of disabled veterans and um, disabled adults. They build these wooden carts and they're mobile and um, they're about six feet long and they're completely self-contained and they're completely organic. So they're safe to have in our nursing home environment. The plants are all non-toxic. They have a, a reusable water system so we can water plants and it drains into um, to a reservoir that we can reuse that water. Um, the lights have a timer system. They have a, a, a little air fan type system. Um, there's a log that our, our residents can log into and document what, what they've done with, an, with that gardening cart. Um, and so that cart right now, we can take it anywhere in our building. We pop it in the elevator, go up and down and go all around with it. And, um, and people really, really enjoy just uh, that, that experience of digging in the dirt and um, planting something and watching it grow and pinching it back and watching the flowers bloom 
And um, we actually have two of these carts now. And um, they're, they've just been a really, really great addition to our, to our inside of our building that we're, build, we're growing all these plants. Um, part of the experience for that is, is the, the scents, you know, the rosemary, the thyme, and those type of things. And so um, being able to, to smell those different herbs and, and share and share the memories that it brings back um, and the joy has been really, really fun. I'll move here to this next slide. Here's, um, these pictures are prior to our pandemic. So this is when we first got our carts. And, um, and you can see where we're, we're assisting some people in digging in the dirt and planting the plants and, and going through there. Um, a holder, horticulture, like it says on my screen here, um, it's therapeutic for people. I mean, I, I don't know how many people will, will say to me, oh, I'm working in the yard this weekend. That's my therapy. And, um, and that's true for so many people that they just really enjoy that whole experience. So um, for, for our seniors, it helps with some of their motor skills. Um, it improves their mood. It improves their self-esteem because there's this huge sense of accomplishment of, of growing a beautiful plant and taking care of that and nurturing that. Um, it improves sleep. It's an activity that they focus on and, um, and it helps them rest. So it reduces agitation for some um, and it acts as an antidepressant. There's far more that the Elder Grow program um, enhances for people. And um, there is an older Elder Grow website that you can go and, and check out their, their product there. But it's really, really great um, outside of COVID. Um, we, we started this right before COVID happened. So we, they have educators who actually come into our building and they'll sit with a group and, um, and they'll talk about the plants and they provide education about the history of the plant and how to take care of the plant and so forth. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning opportunity for everybody, our staff included. And, um, and we've just really, really enjoyed it. So um, that, I would also add that we have um, in our children's arena, we have um, a gardening program as well. So, you know, from the very, very young when they're growing seeds and um, growing their plants, we, um, in our child care centers, we have planters as well. So it's been a lot of fun for all of us. So that's my real, much shorter. <laughs> Um, story about our horticulture program here at Martha and Mary. So um, I just, I just, we just love sharing the joy that, that our seniors are experiencing with it and um, look forward to being beyond COVID and gathering again and, and celebrating these, these beautiful flowers that we have going on here. You have a very extensive program there. So the Martha and Mary residents are blessed for that. I know right now you have a um, auction that you're doing as a fundraiser that I believe ends this Saturday. Correct. Uh, is there anything through the horticulture program that's included in that, um, um, that auction? You know, are they auction? No, not this plan? year. No, no. This year we're raising money for, for our kids program. So um, it's going towards, towards that, that part of our corporation. So we're, we're hoping, you know, with, as our doors slowly will open, I think our, the nursing homes will be the last doors to open when it comes to COVID. Um, but we're hoping that we can do a whole lot more with our horticulture program. So like I said, you saw the greenhouse and, and residents are going out there and taking care of those. And um, so it's been fun, fun to, to do that. Um, they just want to do it more together. <laughs> True. Yeah questions. The floor is open. Ask away. Yep. So Al, you're on the call today. Was there something specific information wise that you were looking for and did you get it out of the presentation today from Laurel or Christine? Well, I sure did. Thank you very much. I uh, want to find out more information about the Master Gardener and some local um, connections uh, for like Kitsap County and and uh, getting involved with uh, resources, how to grow, what to grow, pest control. I've got some deer eating uh, some of my uh, stuff. So 
Uh, I do appreciate it. I was, I thought it was worthwhile, and it's unfortunate there was so few folks that, that signed in. But I want to thank both pre present presenters, and very good. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Lynn, do you have any questions specifically for Christine or Laurel? Well, I think that's it for today, unless anybody has anything to share. And Compass Points only started in January, so this is our third one. And I am so grateful for Christine and Laurel participating with us today. As Al said, um, we definitely did not have on the Zoom today all the folks that registered because we should have had at least 15. But because I'm recording it, this invaluable information is out there now for many, many more to view um, when they have a chance. I just wanted to comment, um, Christine, I love that greenhouse and I think it's great that, that you have a spot that seniors can go out and sit and be toasty and be around plants. So that makes me happy. Thank you. And, and I, I should add that we have some master gardeners um, here in Paulsbo who, um, who've helped support a lot of our projects. And um, we are very, very grateful for that and uh, their expertise. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I am going to say, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your gardens and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mary.